This is It's Not in the Syllabus podcast, the how-tos of a student beyond classroom walls. This is the podcast where you, yes you, get to learn what they don't teach you at school and ace that test called life, or at least get a passing grade and get by. It's Not in the Syllabus is a podcast brought to you by the Adventist International Institute of Advanced Studies, together with the Student Association, where we feature stories by the students and for the students. Join us as we discover life lessons you surely need. Hello everyone, we're back for another episode of It's Not in the Syllabus podcast. We are now on our seventh episode and we are so happy today for a special guest, of course, coming from IS Business Department. Our guest for today is Edivaldo Abel. He hails from Angola and he is a current PhD candidate in business emphasis on human resource here at IAS. And he is happily married to Paula Matilde Abel. She's an accountant. And they have a three-month-old baby boy. Uh, Edivaldo Abel is a speaker and director of Agape Ministry, a digital evangelism ministry designed to share hope worldwide. Wow. Just with that bio, there's so much to unpack, Eddie. But first, how are you? Good, good. It's good to be here. Thank you for, for the invitation. Yes, thank you for being the, on this show. And I'm really curious. Can you tell us more about um, this ministry that you started? All right. Agape Ministry started in 2016. My mm-hmm. wife and I started it. Wow. So <clears throat> the whole idea was or is to share hope, love through messages, which is devotional mm-hmm. messages, and then Bible text on, on platforms such as Facebook and YouTube. Mm-hmm. So that's why, and I believe <clears throat> uh, my first video, she told me to, to sit down and mm-hmm. she would record it. If you, I mean, if you don't know me, I'm a very shy person on camera. Oh, <laughs> that's interesting <laughs> because I've known you as someone really, you know, out there. <laughs> no, no, no. But she, uh, I never wanted to record videos. She's like, okay, no, just sit down, share what is in your mind. Uh, and I believe, I think that video is still on YouTube. I'm just looking forward to delete it. And then I just started sharing ideas. And I remember when I was sharing, she was in tears. Wow. Why? I don't know. What, I don't know what I said. That's probably tears of joy. It could be. So that's how we started. So from now on, from that day on, up to now, we've been studying, uh, sharing messages, uh, mm-hmm. devotionals in Portuguese, also in English, because we started here in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yes, yeah. it's a couple project Definitely. built on love and named as love. Yes. Isn't that great? <laughs> but we also involve other people. There is a group mm-hmm. of individuals, workers, or work with us, like Bible study. We do Bible study online mm-hmm. and then counseling online, all sort of that. Yeah. yeah. And if you happen to learn, uh, I mean, to know Portuguese, um, feel free to follow your page, right? They're on Facebook. Yes. Too? Facebook, you can just type Agape Ministry and you can follow us right away. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Okay, so for our listeners, our topic um, today is about knowing God's will for your life. I think this is a question mm-hmm. that <coughs> most Christians, perhaps even non-Christian um, people, you know, ask themselves. And for specifically for this topic, you don't know this, but now I will let you know. Right. Um, your housemate has actually mentioned in one of our conversations <laughs> right. that... He is a pastor himself, but he was very inspired, I should say, that his roommate or housemate that is from the business department is more pastor-like than he <laughs> is. <laughs> but yeah, so that's, that's a compliment for you. Um, I think it's so interesting how, you know, we can just see how God can work through people's lives mm-hmm. in, you know, whatever field you may be in. So um, let's see... What um, I mean, let's go back in time and maybe you can share something about your childhood and, you know, how did you come about knowing God's will if you have known about it? <laughs> yeah, this is a, a very interesting question because uh, my childhood goes way back on a single mother uh, living with a parent still, but not in a parent's house, just in a parent's compound. My mom was living with, the, with, with my grandfather who was a very strong 
or is still up to this point, a very strong spiritual giant in our family. Mm -hmm. And growing up with him, I remember that every 5 a.m., and remember that I grew up in a place which was very cold in the south of Angola, mm -hmm. Lubango. It's very cold. And to wake up at 5 a.m. as a kid... It's a torture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I used to wake up, We he used to wake us up 5 a.m. for devotional. And then he, as the sun goes down, we also sundown worship. So growing up in that environment helped me to understand who God is until I understood him, but I never had experience with him. Mm. And then I had my own ways. I went out and then I discovered God's will for my life in the Philippines. Wow. Yeah, okay. I think, not I think, in 2013, uh, July 20, mm -hmm. I was baptized in Baguio. Mm -hmm. This Philippines. is the first time you were baptized. This is the fi the first time. Remember that I grew up in a Christian oh. Seventh Day Adventist oh. environment where on Friday afternoon nobody watches anything on TV, mm -hmm. nobody listens to anything on TV. Mm -hmm. So this is where I grew up. Okay. And, and how old were you when you were baptized? I was twenty. 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 Okay. Twenty. Yeah, that's actually pretty late for yeah, some, you yeah, know. Yeah. But yes, tell us the story. Twenty years old, I was baptized in the Philippines. So I just began my Christian journey in the Philippines. So um, to know God's will, it took me to go out, to experience mm -hmm. so many things that I have no pleasure to say. And then I just realized that that wasn't, wasn't for me. And then I, I can testify when the Bible says, teach the children the ways of the Lord. When he grows up, will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, verse 6. I remember that the teachings that I had at home mm -hmm. helped me to come a point and say, no, this is not my life. I know better than this. Yeah. Yeah. And what I really like about that is that um, you went your way to experience God for yourself. Yeah. Even if he <coughs> was there the whole time, you know, I mean, as a kid, you know, he can just be like a big figure at home. But this time, and maybe that's also why you took time, right? Mm -hmm. um, for you to discover more about that. Yeah. So um, what was that um, turning point? I know you mentioned, you know, you were baptized here in the Philippines. But was there a particular um, event or happening that you experienced that made you, oh, okay, I need to turn my life around and yeah. yeah I think it not I think uh, I keep on saying I think but <laughs> the idea is I remember I told you in the beginning I grew up with a single mom uh, I did not know my father until a certain time when I when he came I moved with him mm -hmm. so by moving with him in our relationship wasn't that uh, fatherly and, and mm -hmm. wasn't nice so I used to be a troublemaker, making a lot of issues, and I wasn't that a mm -hmm. son mm -hmm. that okay. any fa any father would wish to have. So the turning point was when I remember my father sent me a message while I was in the Philippines. Okay, and you were on your bachelor's taking. I wasn't my bachelor's. Okay. I was in Baguio University of Baguio taking engineer mecha mechatronic wow. engineering. Okay. So. After some of the things that I have done at home, he discovered it and he messaged me. I still remember that message, but not with the anger that I had to before. Mm -hmm. And said, I regret for having a son like you. Wow. Oh, that was like, oh, oh that man. That is harsh. That is hard. That reminds me of, you know, God when he created the world yeah. and he mentioned regret only twice. Twice. Yeah. I regretted for creating human beings. So I was like, no, I needed to change. I need to do something different. So that mm -hmm. was the turning point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, definitely when family is involved, especially, um, you know, you didn't grow up with your dad, that's definitely different. But um, in your experience, you know, discovering God's will, it's definitely different for everyone. You know, it looks definitely. different for me, <coughs> for you. Um, what exactly made you know or how do you know what God's will is actually? Okay, wh what made me know what God's will is actually is from the time I was baptized, I began to have a personal relationship with God. I mm -hmm. think that is the key mm -hmm. of knowing what God I I God's will. Now, if we can talk about career and, and other things. I'll just focus on the spiritual journey mm -hmm. and then maybe hint a little bit on the career. I remember that I came to the Philippines to take petroleum engineering. Okay. So when I came here, the schools were closed, the registration were closed, so I needed to go to Baguio. Mm -hmm. So Baguio, I could at least do engineering because my uncle was close by and he could 
look at me or watch me so sort to say mm-hmm. so but and then i move back to batangas where they in that school batanga state university mm-hmm. they offer petroleum engineering mm-hmm. so when i came back they told me no we cannot give you this degree uh i will not mention this because <laughs> we are, we are, it's a bro- broadcast podcasting it but they say no we cannot take it so i was so angry that's the second closed door yeah, that was a closed door i was so angry i said no i, I you know i grew up thinking of becoming an engineer mm-hmm. and then the doors were closing so i said no i don't know i what is god's will for me mm-hmm. and then a friend of mine introduced me to industri- industrial technology which is i if you graduate but with that degree you can also work in the oil industry so I was like okay that's cool we can do it but i was not feeling it mm-hmm. i was just there because i you wanted had. to be there mm-hmm. but then when i had a relationship with god i began to pray and say god what is your will mm-hmm. for me and then it leads me to proverbs chapter chapter 3 okay. verse 5 to 6 trust in the Lord with all your heart and live not in your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him so i had to trust mm mm-hmm. point number one. strong word trust trust so trust what in god and he says live not in your own understanding it doesn't mean you don't need to have a dream mm-hmm. you don't need to have a desire mm-hmm. you can you tell him but you should not live in your own understanding mm-hmm. so and in and the text says in all your ways acknowledge he will direct your path mm-hmm. so when you trust when you acknowledge when you don't rely on yourself you know god directs i never thought i would have done my phd and become maybe a teacher mm-hmm. i dream of having to be a doctor but i never thought in which line so now god brought me to ias i did my masters and then i'm doing my phd i don't know why god will lead me mm-hmm. but i know for sure that i want to be a teacher mm-hmm. i want to teach i want to interact with people So this is number 2. Sometimes you may not you may not have the idea. Mm-hmm. But when you have the desire, God will just direct your path. Wow, that's really um powerful. Actually, uh this reminded me of um a podcast that I've also um listened to when you mentioned that um yeah, that verse, it does not tell us, you know, just to sit and, you know, wait yeah. maybe for something to fall and be like, "Hey, that this is the path you're supposed to go." No. Mm-hmm. Um actually, we are advised to a uh, plan, right? Plan mm-hmm. ahead, <coughs> but we commit those plans and we should be flexible and subject to the changes that the Lord, you know, impresses in our life. Yeah. Um so this podcast is by Pastor Ty Gibson. It's mm-hmm. called Storyboard Your Life. So he talks about um, you know, how you can plan for your life, um career specifically, but it applies to any, mm-hmm. you know, areas of your life. And yeah, it, it's really um powerful and again, it's a, it goes along with um what you just shared. Mm-hmm. So your life basically went on a different trajectory right from Definitely. engineering to yeah. like doctor ish but te- <laughs> teaching technically yeah. right yeah and so you know through this journey i'm sure you had moments of doubt moments of confusion mm-hmm. how do you navigate towards that good I, up to this moment i have moments of doubts mm-hmm. <laughs> i i have i'm writing my uh, my my dissertation mm-hmm. and it's not easy mm-hmm. Uh, writing i think is one of the most difficult jobs no reading is the most difficult job i think i'm hearing silent <laughs> amens from phd students <laughs> and translating your ideas into your documents another dif- is a different thing but it doesn't mean just because the journey is tough god stop leading you mm-hmm. you understand yeah repeat that i think that it doesn't mean the journey is tough god has stop leading you no sometimes you need to go through walls mm mm-hmm to understand how to enjoy life. You know sometimes you need to be in tears to know how to smile. Mm-hmm. So when things are difficult, what is my comfort? Is the Bible? Mm-hmm. Is meditation? When we talk about meditation, I guess the previous uh, mm-hmm. podcast they spoke about meditation, we need to be careful with that word, which mm-hmm. is to take a moment and just pray. So when things are difficult for me I pray when finances are not coming in when money is not coming in I just pray and trust Now when we talk about trust it doesn't mean you stop working Just because you pray God will not his the situation 
you keep on doing it. You receive your paper is rejected, you keep on take Do a moment off, a day off, keep on reading it and keep correcting your paper. Mm -hmm. Because if you just close it, mm -hmm. close your computer, <laughs> God will not send the angels to do your revisions. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. So just because the joining is stopped, God has not stopped leading you. It's still there. In fact, one of my favorite uh, authors said, uh, God shout in our pains. Oh, shout. As in scream. Shout. He okay. scream in our pains. Wow. And talk to us in when we are rejoicing. Mm -hmm. When we are in pain, he shouts. Gim! Yeah. But when you are rejoicing, you just talk. Yeah. This is um, like our Sabbath school lesson on crucibles, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, crucibles make us um, stronger. And even, um, you know, in a straight pathway, we take detours, mm -hmm. you take a U-turn. When you are driving, and when you are a driver, it annoys you, you know, when ways lead you somewhere else. Definitely. But in life, sometimes that's even needed for you to actually get to your destination, for you to appreciate your mm -hmm. destination. And so finding that beauty in that journey as well mm -hmm. and not be always like, <gasps> what is the end game? You know, like yeah. I need to know. And I think that's also um, one thing that I've been learning like throughout my life that God works in patterns. I don't know for you, mm -hmm. but have you experienced that? You know, yeah. like the way he impresses you in the past, the way he has answered your prayers in the past would also be um, the way, you know, in the present and in <laughs> the future. And so looking out for those, those patterns is, is also um, important as mm -hmm. you, you know, discover God's will. Um, and in your journey, did you have like any godly counselors, advisors mm -hmm. or Whenever you make decisions, is it mainly maybe you and your wife now? Mm -hmm. But how does that play into this? Oh, thank you for bringing that up because um, the idea of spiritual counselor, it counts a lot. When we are choosing a career, likely we have to do s certain tests. Mm -hmm. There are surveys you can do for you to, to choose your career. But a spiritual counselor counts when um, I wanted to come right after I finished my bachelor. I wanted to go home. Actually, mm -hmm. my father came to my graduation. I said, Dad, I'm ready. I want to go home, start maybe a, a job and making money. So he said, you just have a bachelor's. A bachelor is just a key to unlock other degrees. I said, so what are you saying? He said, no, go for your master's. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, but I want to make money. I said, no, no, just go for your master's and we'll see from there. So I, had, I still have one, which is my dad. Uh, but now I have my wife. Mm -hmm. So when we, before deciding on anything, I talk to God first. We mm -hmm. talk to God. And then we, I talk to someone. Mm -hmm. Because God can use a person to maybe direct you mm -hmm. in a closed door that we're not really paying attention. So God can use that person. But be careful when you are choosing for a spiritual counselor. Make sure he's really grounded in the Bible. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells a story in the book of Daniel that only three young boys did not bow when they mm -hmm. heard the music. Mm -hmm. So the question is, where are the elders? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so be careful when choosing a counselor, a spiritual counselor. Make sure he's really grounded, or he, she is grounded in the Word mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's a man who is a woman who gives really direction. He's a man of vision because when you are sitting on the journey, don't ask for someone who never left his own house. Mm. Yeah. That's powerful. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely um, test, right? Yeah. That's what the Bible says also. Test against um, the Spirit and against the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And here's a tricky question, though. Right. What if uh, you are um, faced with two good options? You know, it's easy when you're deciding between right and mm -hmm bad i mean you already basically know it's just you dealing with your conscience and the holy spirit mm -hmm. but what if these are two good options how do you go about it if you have two good options if there are two good options how do you go about selecting the best one yes i mean you need to decide right which one yeah you need to decide which one so what if um you know okay basic we always check it if it's according to god's word mm -hmm. check both check you know, you ask counselors, both check. check. So 
and then but you still need to decide mm-hmm. so how do you yeah how do you go about that oh that is a difficult one <laughs> <laughs> how do you go about that one uh, i will say uh the first thing you need to do or to go to select that one is if it's what you really wanted to do mm-hmm. and uh maybe if it's in line of professional career our professional career should always lead to benefit someone mm. so is that what i'm choosing will it help humanity mm-hmm. or will it just satisfy me mm-hmm. all right wow. yeah. will it help someone else out there because i can't just choose a profession that will keep it for myself even if it's a good salary even if it's uh, it's 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 a good rewards but the question the underlying question is will it benefit someone else yeah, yeah. so it's a question of being selfless or yeah. being selfish selfless that's really great yeah thank you so much eddie we've learned so many things about yeah discovering god's will and i'm sure that you know people on this journey mm-hmm. does not like after listening to the to this podcast or not like now i know what to do in my you know with my life yeah. uh but if there was anything that you would like our audience to take away just one thing what would it be is to have a personal relationship with christ you will never know god's will when you don't know god and a relationship with god is by studying his word by praying and sharing christ and then remember When you do have a plan, it doesn't mean God it doesn't mean God will do everything. You need also to think because the Bible says come and reason together says the Lord. So we need to think with God and God will do the rest. Amen. It's been a recurring theme throughout the month that I'm really loving and enjoying, which is the emphasis really on, you know, what's important. First yeah. things first. relationship with God. And so yeah, I hope that our audience have enjoyed um listening to this episode. Thank you so much once again, Eddie. Thank you. Thank And, you for having me. Um I'm sure we'll see you around. So for our audience and listeners, if you have anything to suggest, to comment, we would like to hear from you and of course praying for everyone to, you know, go on that journey to build that personal relationship with God and eventually discover what's his will for your life. Thank you and see you again. God bless you. Bye.